right, here we are at week 29 of lions and tigers and bears. Well, lions, actually, and tigers, but mostly lions. And mostly Egyptian, because it's learning hieroglyphics, doodling with purpose. Don't just doodle in your spare time. Doodle with purpose, with learn something at the same time. Egyptian hieroglyphs are all based on things from ancient Egypt, and that's why we get all sorts of crazy creatures. Now, one thing we haven't mentioned in a couple episodes is to remember that all hieroglyphs are written from left to right or right to left. So pretty much all of these glyphs, you should practice both directions. I mean, master one direction first, but it's good to keep this in mind because eventually you're going to need to know backwards and forwards. All right, as usual, let's jump into review of the three glyphs we learned last time before doing three all new glyphs this time. So last week, we started off with the butcher's knife, which is a half square, line straight up, and then a curve to make the knife. All right, next up, we have two reed shoots, rush shoots, excuse me, and then a V at the end for the rush shoots, curved lines with a V. And then the ox tongue, which is basically a long curved line and a short curved line. All right, let's jump into this week. So the first one, we're gonna finish up the ends with a, but not quite a, a vase, it's much more of a bowl, but it's like that bowl vasey thing. It's kind of like this, but without the handle. I was having trouble finding exactly the ancient Egyptian version, but uh, more or less you're drawing this, just minus that little handle there at the top. And the bowl is going to actually be an interesting one because of the sound. So there's a lot of bowls in ancient Egyptian. The one we're going to be concentrating on here is the one labeled N at the bottom, which shows like some, I don't know, vines coming out the top. You're not drawing the vines. This is just a uh, extra detail. But the interesting thing is this one, while it most of the time is going to make the NW sound, nwa, this is one of those rare hieroglyphs, kind of like the chisel, that actually makes more than one sound. We have to double up here. And how do you know which sound it makes? Well, it only makes the secondary sound in a handful of words, which is I-N, in. So for the most part, it's N-W, but occasionally it will be I-N. Circle, two straight lines, diagonal, and connect. Circle, diagonal line, diagonal line, and connect. And that's your bowl. Circle, diagonal line, diagonal line, and connect. All right, next up this week, we've got another bird for you, the pin-tailed duck. But this is a very different kind of bird. We've never done this type before. I mean, we've done a lot of birds, but this is a bird in flight. In fact, it's the only bird in flight that is a, uh, a letter. There's some uh, that are determinatives, but this is the only in-flight bird that is going to be a sound. So here's how it looks. You can see there its wings spread out and the uh, you can tell it's a pintail duck because of the pintail, I suppose. I'm not a uh, you know bird expert, but I know a lot. Apparently I've learned how to draw quite a few of them. And this one stands out again because not only uh, due to it being in flight, but it, it does pop up in quite a few words, and it's very easy to recognize when you're looking at Stella in museum because it's got such a wide, I guess, length in, in the drawing. And this is the P-A. I think of it as Pa, like the bird's name is Pa, or, you know, hey, Pa, you got a bird? I don't know. Again, I have crazy ways of remembering this, but it's Pa, P-A, like dad, but in this case, a bird, not your dad. All right, let's look how to draw it. So it's gonna be a half circle down and another crossing at the end. Then you're gonna make one wing, a second wing, a lightning bolt for the legs, two lightning bolts, head, neck, and beak, and eye. See that again. So half circle, half circle crossing to make an X there at the bottom. Wing one, wing two, lightning bolt one, lightning bolt two for the legs, circle for the head, and a beak, and fix up your mistake. Let's look at it one more time. Half circle, half circle crossing at the bottom. Wing, wing, lightning bolt leg, lightning bolt leg, neck, head, beak, and eye. And there's your flying pintail duck. 
All right, our last one for today is going to be a lion. And I know we already did a full lion for the letter L, which we'll actually come back to because it's another one of those glyphs that makes rare, more than one sound on a rare occasion. But in this case, we're just dealing with part of a lion, not the whole thing. We're actually dealing with the back end. And we're not drawing it from this angle where you're looking straight on at a lion. Even though this is a picture of a griffin, it actually is a perfect demonstration of what we're drawing, which is the back end of a lion, because griffins have back ends of lions. So you can see the way it's curved and the tail flourishes out like that. This is darn close to what the, uh, the glyph looks like. And this is a p -h sound, p ph, like p. Uh, yeah, again, that's the sound. What are you going to say? It's ph. Um, I guess like you're taking a uh, chemical review. All right, so first the legs up, back for sort of the butt, and then a twist up for the tail. One more time, the legs first, then up, a bulge in the back, and then a tail. First the legs, come back up, around a bulge for the back, and loop up for the tail. All right, our journey continues. We've got three more glyphs behind us, and uh, not many more, but many more glyphs to go. We're halfway through the double consonants, and there's only a handful of triple consonants, and then we'll do kind of a cleanup with some of the ideograms. If you like this series, let me know. Give it a like. Give me a comment. Let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, what you'd like to see more of or less of. And uh, we'll keep doodling with purpose on your week-to-week -week guide to learning ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs at home. Thanks for watching.